Boa tarde, my friends, or good afternoon. I am talking to you today from Lisbon, Portugal. This is my view. I'm gonna miss it so much. I'm checking out of my Airbnb. It's a little bit noisy. It's a pretty cool area, lots of fun things to do, lots of restaurants, and I'm gonna miss it. But today we're gonna talk about four things I love about being in Lisbon. Stick around. Okay, number one, the people here are so friendly. I thought it was a little odd when my Uber driver, no, not an Uber, a Bolt. They do have Uber here, but I took a Bolt. It's a different ride app. I thought it was interesting that my Bolt driver gave me his home phone number. <laughs> and he was not trying to hit on me. He was super young. He could have been my son or something, but he was just being friendly. And I guess he's being resourceful. He thought maybe he could take me around the city and I would call him directly, but really kind from him to the host of my Airbnb, to the people that I've met in restaurants. Um, yesterday, I took a commuter train out to a faraway city called Sintra that I'll talk to you about in another video. But then when I came back, I had to switch to the Metro and I couldn't remember how to get from the commuter train to the Metro. And I was wandering around looking foolish and lost and touristy. And this really nice guy, young, like 25, 25 year old guy came over and in Portuguese, knew that I was lost and direct me to the Metro. Anyway, the people here are so nice. If you've ever lived in New York City, it's like night and day. <laughs> Love New York City, one of my favorite cities in the world, but people are not known for being friendly. I will definitely say that the people here in Lisbon have been so nice. So that is a huge plus. And it does help if you know a few Portuguese phrases. I don't know that many, but I know how to say hola, Hola, and <laughs> bom dia, good morning, and boa tarde, good afternoon, and boa noite, good evening, and a few other phrases. So that does go a long way. I was told you don't need to learn any Portuguese if you're going to Lisbon. Everybody speaks English. Let me tell you, that is not the case. <laughs> now, I guess generally maybe younger people do. I guess maybe it's mandatory in schools now to learn English, but not everybody speaks it and not everybody you're going to run into will be young right i have been in many stores where they're asking me do you want a bag and i don't know what they're saying <laughs> so i should learn that phrase because they know the word bag so they speak to me in portuguese and i'm like what i don't speak portuguese they're like they're showing me a bag like saying the word bag so it does help to have some phrases so number one portuguese people are super friendly Number two, the fruit is amazing. Look at my breakfast that I have here, some blueberries and some oranges. I don't know why I'm surprised because I always love the fruit when I go out of the United States. It's, it's kind of hit or miss a lot of the time in the States because the fruit often is brought from so far away, so they pick it when it's not ripe. Anyway, here, these oranges, maybe they're clementines, tangerines, I actually don't know the difference between all of those sometimes, but these are so juicy, so sweet. Oh my gosh. Not a huge blueberry flavor. I'm not a huge blueberry fan, but you know, they have antioxidants trying to do right by my body. But these are really good. Okay. A little tart. But that's what blueberries are. But in general, the fruit is so much better here. And again, I'm comparing this to where I live in Dallas. <laughs> Now, I have had good fruit in Dallas. I'm not trying to tear down Dallas or the United States, but generally when I'm abroad, the fruit, probably because it's picked locally, is always so much better. So number two that I love, and the second thing I love about Lisbon is the fruit. The third thing I love about Lisbon is that parts of it are really hilly. Now, that sounds kind of crazy, I understand, but I would rather walk outside in a beautiful city with hills than be on a Stairmaster, right? Not that I'm on a Stairmaster that often, but a big part of that is because Stairmasters are boring. <laughs> it is not boring at all to walk around Lisbon. Now, yesterday I went to Sintra. Like I mentioned, that's a town about 45 minutes outside of Lisbon, also very hilly, but it was amazing because I was walking all around and Next thing you know, I walked 11,000 steps and I didn't even notice. 
it was amazing, just fun. So not all of Lisbon is hilly, but parts of it are very, very hilly. So if you wanna get your exercise, you can just walk outside and be enamored by the beauty of the city at the same time. So I do like that there are lots of hills in Lisbon. The fourth thing I love about visiting Lisbon is it is not a tipping city, country, maybe this whole region of the world, Europe, I don't know for sure, but I am kind of over the like out of control tipping that's going on in the United States. You know, it started out as restaurants, you're tipping your server, they're being underpaid, which I'm not sure why the consumer, like why the customer is supposed to make up the difference of a waitress's salary. I, somebody explained that to me, I don't know. But okay, that makes sense. But it's gotten out of control. I went and bought a cookie the other day. The, the this was in Dallas. And the cashier turned around, got the cookie off, cookie off the shelf, handed it to me, and was expecting a 15 or 20% tip. Um, yeah, no, it's gotten crazy. You're tipping your waiter, you're tipping your waitress, you're tipping your bartender, you're tipping your hairdresser, you're tipping your nail person. Oh my gosh, the other day I had to get my car towed and they asked me if I wanted to tip. And you know, I just wasn't even thinking about it. And so I did, I gave the guy a 15% tip for towing my car. Have you ever tipped for having your car towed? I don't know. It's just, it's everywhere, everywhere. And the challenge is at the end of the bill, you're thinking, okay, was this worth 10%? Was it worth 15%? Was it worth 20%? And then you're thinking, but this was a really low bill. So if I'm tipping on a $5 bill, this doesn't seem like enough. Should I tip them more? But then that's a 50% tip and it's too much. It's too much. In Lisbon, I don't have to worry about that. You can tip if you want to, right? You can round up, you can add a euro or two. That's kind of expected sometimes or appreciated, I should say. But you're not gonna be given the side eye if you don't leave a 20% tip. I just think that's great. You can make the decision about whether it's important to you, but also maybe people are being paid more. And so it's not, they're not like relying on a tip because their boss in the restaurant is only paying them 250 an hour, right? So I love that it is not a tipping city. So that is number four. So those are four things I love about being in Lisbon. Have you ever been to Lisbon? Let me know what you love in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.